Hey, it's Chris. Today we're gonna be checking out six different ultra minimal and thin iPhone cases because I personally cannot stand a big, bulky, clunky, gargantuan case that makes the beautiful iPhone seem like a brick. Basically, my perfect case is really thin and clear and it lets the iPhone be as natural as possible while offering at least some protection. So from the barely there ultra ultra thin to the thin but yet offers a little bit of protection, we're gonna cover the full spectrum. So I'm gonna go through these cases one by one and just sort of explain what's good, what's bad, and at the very end, I'm gonna let you know which one my actual favorite is and my top recommendation. There's timestamps down in the description if you wanna skip around and shout out to Coffee Club, everybody who bought me a coffee just to say thanks if you like this video. If it's helpful to you, then you might consider tipping me with a coffee as well. That link is down in the description. Otherwise, let's get into it. We're going to start things off by talking about the $39 Apple clear case because it's sort of the standard by which all these other cases are going to end up being judged. This case's thing is that it's an official Apple case. Now, there is something to be said about having an official Apple accessory. It just kind of feels good to keep everything all Apple. And that being said, I really do feel like this is about the perfect blend of thinness and protection without having extra bulk. So you do get that minimalism and you do get that utility and they work really well together in this case. Now, as soon as you take this out of the package, you can tell that it's very strong and rigid. Unlike some other cases that are clear and thin, and I'm gonna show you some examples, this thing is strong. One thing that kind of bugs me about this case, I would consider it its main drawback, is that the oils from your hand tend to get on this case and they don't dissipate, which tends to make it get slipperier over time. Like, pretty slippery. I've almost dropped it several times. And so it's almost like you're paying for this case and it's a good thing that it's on there because you may end up actually dropping it and needing that protection. And it's definitely not just this case. Any other cases that have similar material sort of have that same issue. Now look, this is not a cheap case by any means. It's $40, which is about twice as expensive as similar products that are out there. So you definitely pay a premium for that Apple branding, which actually there's no actual visible branding, and it's clear so you do see through to the iPhone's Apple logo, which is cool. That's the whole reason here that I like it. But even though it may be expensive, I do feel like it's very high quality. Next up, we're gonna be talking about the $25 Grip 2U case. And this case's thing is that it has a unique grip band. This case is very, very similar to the official Apple case that I just mentioned, with one major exception it has a grip band on the back. And it's basically like a pop socket alternative. So you've seen something like this before. Pop a few fingers in through the grip band and then it's like your phone is like glued to your hand. It's not gonna fall off and drop. I guess you could say it's pretty handy. Now you might think just by looking at it that this grip band would add some real bulk to the case, to this setup. But actually, surprisingly, it really doesn't. In fact, I barely even notice that it's on there, even when I'm not using it and it still allows for wireless charging, which is cool. Unlike the Apple case though, there is a little bit of branding on the back in the upper right corner, but it's so subtle because it's a clear case, I mean, I don't even notice it. Now I was just talking about on the Apple case how it can kind of get slippery over time as you use it, and this one actually is a lot grippier even when you're not using that grip band because it just adds some extra texture on the back even when you're just holding it, so I like that. One thing that's kind of weird though is that that lip on the front that helps protect your screen when you turn it over and lay it down on a surface is kind of sharp. It's not like a razor blade sharp, but it's sharp enough that I've noticed it a couple of times. The next case that we're gonna talk about is this $13 metal X-frame case. This case's thing is that it's barely there. Basically, this case, if you can even call it a case because it's barely there, is all about the aesthetic. It just looks very cool. Now, the reason I'm not showing you what it looks like on my actual phone is because they don't yet appear to sell it for the iPhone 11. So I ordered the old model just to check it out because it's under 15 bucks. I was curious and it is very minimal. It's like the definition of minimal in a way. And it's kind of cool that for the price, it does come with a skin, it comes with a screen protector, whatever. The thing is, I'm not gonna actually use those if they ever do come out with one for the 11 because that sort of defeats the whole purpose. But then of course, you leave yourself open to scratches if you don't use that skin or whatever. And I'm seeing in the reviews that people who aren't using it say this thing does have the potential to scratch up your phone and that the screws don't really stay tight. So maybe this one is like a warning to you guys. It looks cool. 
but steer clear. That's probably my advice. The next two cases that we're gonna look at are the $29 Totally case and the $20 Kadabe Veil, both of which are the epitome of ultra thin, probably what you had in mind when you clicked on this video. The thing with these cases is that they're actually as thin as possible. So the Totally case is pretty well known. It's very similar to the Peel, basically the same thing. It's as thin as it gets, and all it basically offers you is scratch protection, no drop protection whatsoever. But it's amazing though. It's as close to a naked phone as you can get. And that means that it feels very natural in your hand. Like you can't even believe how thin this thing feels. It's great. Now the veil is basically exactly the same thing, except it has a more textured surface for a better grip. And it's $10 cheaper. Now it's not like the totally case is slippery because it's not, it's just that if you want that extra grip just for a little bit of extra security, then you'll get that with the veil. Now, ever since I saw the first Peel case that was like this, I've loved this form factor in an iPhone case. That said, I feel pretty secure in the way that I handle my phones to use this on a daily basis, but still, I'm left with just like a splinter of worry in the back of my brain that something bad could happen to it. So if you're gonna use a case like this, it would really honestly be a good idea to get some Apple Care protection. Now, neither of these cases is fully 100% clear, but they are see-through, so you can still make out that Apple logo when you're looking through the back. So it fits into the criteria of what I'm looking for for this kind of a video. The last case that I wanna tell you guys about is the $10 Olexar case, and its thing is that it's cheap. Now, I'm featuring this thing last, but I really don't feel like it's the least. I mean, it's $10, wow, that's pretty crazy. And while it may look very similar to the official Apple case, the materials and how it actually feels and works actually couldn't be more different. Whereas if you're just holding the Apple case alone in your hand, you can tell that it's very stiff and strong. The Olexar case, by contrast, is actually kind of flimsy and soft. But once it's on your actual phone, you're really not gonna notice the difference because it's gonna be all stretched out and secure and tight. One caution with this cheaper case is that the lip on the front that helps you protect it when you turn your phone over and set it down screen first is almost non-existent. I'm not gonna say non-existent, but it's definitely a lot thinner or smaller, that lip, than Apple's case. If you put the two side by side, the Apple case sticks up off the table a little bit more because it does have that extra lip of protection. So if you're looking for something that is thin, that is very minimal, that's clear, that's see-through, that does offer some protection, at least, like the Apple case, but isn't quite as thin, not quite as minimal as like the Totally, this one's sort of in the middle there. But I think factor into the price, even though it is cheap, a screen protector. So which one would I ultimately pick if you forced me to make a decision? Well, it's a toss up. I hate to do that to you. I know you're looking for something really definitive, but for me, it comes down to that veil case because I like the totally form factor, but I like having that extra grip that the veil case gives me. I ultimately do like that the best. So either the veil or that grip to you case with that extra grip band on the back. I kept coming back to it as I was going throughout and testing all of these. And it's just so convenient and it's surprisingly not as bulky as you would think. It actually fits in your pocket really, really well. And it's also grippier than like the Apple case. Honestly though, each of these cases, each having their own thing or unique selling point is probably gonna be perfect for somebody out there. And so hopefully this video was useful in helping you decide. And I'll actually have these all linked up down below. That said, it's time to get into our iPhone case q and I asked you guys to hit me up with some questions and you got me with several. The first one being, kind of funnily to me, is it even worth it to put a case on your iPhone? Well, here's the thing. Last time I didn't put a case on my iPhone, just went totally case-free, naked as can be, the phone, and I'm talking about the phone, not myself. Then guess what? It was just the right combination of some pants or shorts, I actually think they were shorts, that didn't have a deep enough pocket, and the angle of the chair that I sat down in, and it just like was sitting back too far, and my phone popped out and hit the concrete, boom, crack. And so as much as you're gonna be careful, and as much as you plan ahead, and sort of like baby it, uh, going case free, you're just asking for some sort of damage to your iPhone. So I would say then yes, it's worth it to get a case. And that's why though, I don't like having a case on there. I would go with an ultra minimal case like the six that I've just been talking about. 
Somebody asked about the official iPhone battery case. Here's the thing, I don't love the official battery case. I don't love any battery case. They're so bulky and really they don't look good. And the thing is with the new iPhones, they've improved their battery life so much that I don't even need to worry about that extra boost. I can get through the day just fine, even with the 11. Um, the Max gives you even more, the Pro, I mean, but the 11, I'm cool with that extra four hours. Somebody said, what's the best non-slip case? Um, I'm really considering making another video on non-minimal cases because there's some really interesting ones out there. We have like the wallet cases. There's a really nice one from 12 South that I've been testing out. Um, and then you do have these other ones that are like really protective or grippy. And I know there's one from Dbrand that's a super grippy case. I've been hearing good things about it and it seems like it's sort of minimal. I, I haven't gone hands on. So if you guys wanna see me like try that, test it out, talk about it more, then let me know. Otherwise, I don't really have a recommendation yet. And actually somebody else asked, am I a fan of wallet type cases that let you take a card or your ID with you and stuff too? The answer is I can be or I can't be. I really like the idea of combining two things into one, your wallet and your phone or your case, uh, because then you're just cutting down on like the actual bulk in your everyday carry. So I like the idea of it. In practice, um, it takes a little bit more getting used to, and that's where I'm not 100% sure that I like it. And the one thing is like, if you lose that, then you've lost like all your stuff and not just like half of it, right? It's not just your phone that got lost, it's not just your wallet. So there's that to consider. And if there's a case that only lets you fit like two or three cards, well, I have more than that. Because what if you got your driver's license and your Apple card and some other card and your debit card? You know, like you have all these different cards. Is that really enough? I'm not ready to go that minimal personally. Oh, and then if you add in cash, like that's a whole nother layer. The cash is what ends up being really the bulkiest thing, I think. Because still here in America, at least, cash comes in handy every now and then, like a couple of times a month. Like I still am in a situation where either you need to leave a tip somewhere or something and that cash comes in handy. So there's that too. On the flip side though, if you're willing to go a little bit more bulky, you can do something like the 12 South case that I mentioned earlier. I'll link these up down below all the cases that I'm talking about. And that takes up a lot of room in your pocket, but then you end up having space for all your different stuff and some cash. And what I like about that one is that it has a detachable element, a magnetic element, so you can get um, almost the best of both worlds in certain situations where you have a smaller, thinner, minimal case that looks pretty nice that can magnet into this bigger, bulkier case. And the way I was using that recently was when I got home, I would take out that uh, thinner, minimal case, carry that around with me, and then when I had to go out somewhere, pop it back in, and then I had everything with me. Um, but ultimately, uh, I haven't been using that for a while because I've just kind of reverted back to the ultra minimal style that I really have always liked. Somebody says, are clear cases protective or are they just for showing off the iPhone inside? I would say if you get something like Apple's clear case, that is protective. And it also does show off what's inside. And like I said in the video, it's really about the perfect blend of thinness and protection for me. Um, definitely could be more protective, but I think it's certainly gonna survive like you know, a three, four foot fall. Like you might, uh, if, it, if you take it out of your pocket and it falls down on the concrete or something, I wouldn't really worry about it in that case. Somebody asked if there's better or cheaper leather cases than the official Apple leather cases. Here's the thing, um, and I've talked about this with watch bands. Of course you can get a cheaper leather product, but it doesn't always hold up in terms of quality. So you gotta be careful. And even some of the more premium brands out there, and that would charge you a decent amount of money for a leather case, and even if it's still a little bit less than Apple, you gotta watch out. Like one case in particular is from Mujo, and I, I checked out their leather case, they sent it to me a couple of years ago, and it ended up being really bad quality. The stitching was coming out, and I've heard really good things though about Mujo since then. So it could be that they fixed that issue, or maybe it was just the one that I had. Um, but it looked really nice, and it just ended up being a little bit defective. So what I would say, if you get the Apple case, you know that you're gonna get something that's high quality and maybe it's worth it to spend that little bit extra 
to ensure that it's gonna last you for a while. And I also like the way that those get patinaed and wear over time, um, the Apple cases. They tend to look really good as you start to use them over a period of months and kind of break them in. Somebody asked, what's my favorite ultra thin case that's easy to take off and easy to put back on? And you know what? I haven't really found one that's super easy to get on and off. Like Apple's official cases, those things are on there really tight, really snug. And so it's, those are fairly easy to pop in, but taking them out, I mean, you gotta bend a little bit. It's not like gonna put your phone in danger of bending or anything, um, but it's also not super quick. Now, something like the Totally cases, those are on there so snug, or the Veil case that I featured in this video, those are really snug too, and I almost get worried that I'm gonna destroy them, like tear them or something when I'm taking those off because they're so thin. So I don't know, I don't have a really good answer there. Uh, I would just say like, pick a case that you're gonna be happy with for a while. Somebody says, what's the worst iPhone case that I've ever had? Um, I guess this counts because I had it and tried it. It was a case that somebody sent over and it was from a big name company. I'm not gonna name them right now, but they had a case that it had like extra space in the bottom and it would sort of make a sound whenever I just held the case, the phone, because there was like a gap, an air gap between the case and the phone and it drove me nuts. I mean, I'm sure it was like a millimeter or like just a tiny, tiny little gap, but just that extra squeeze that it had, um, it was really annoying. And so that just goes to show you, um, it does pay to look at the reviews uh, on channels like this and elsewhere that you can find before you buy a case. Because if you go for that no name case or even the brand name case, you might be surprised like when you get it with the fit um, and so none of the cases that I featured in this video had like problems with the fit or like extra space in between um, the case and the phone. So if you buy any of the ones that I featured here, you should be good. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this particular video. I made a really great video that this one's sort of a follow-up to. I don't know, it's been like a couple of years on ultra minimal iPhone cases. If you wanna check that out, the original, I'm sure it still has some really interesting information and visuals for you. Uh, to consume, so I'll link that up down below. And don't forget, you can follow at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K -K, on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.